we who has condemned george bush as terrorist number 1 today it is very common i can name a hundred top personalities and we know that the honorable justice husband i didn't know that even he considered rightly is honest judge and i agree with that i don't know when is the first time he said i don't want to compete with him he is more senior to me i don't know when is the first time he said that but now when we read records we come to know that the president of venezuela hago chavez he said that the biggest terrorist in the world is george bush the president elect of bolivia evo morales he said that george bush is a terrorist the famous singer and activist of america harry belfont he said the biggest terrorist in the world is george bush an mp in uk an mp in uk by the name of george galloway he said the biggest terrorist in the world is george bush and he said that the blood that is there on the hands of george bush and tony blair is much more than the bombers who have done bombing in london and when you have that he said it will be justified george galloway was mp in uk he said it will be justified that if a suicide bomber goes and attacks and kills tony blair without injuring any other innocent human being that suicide bomber will be justified who said that george galloway <laughs> we have jyoti basu a few months back he said when george bush came to india that number one terrorist is george bush <laughs> everyone says that but the indian government wants to invite him for what so that we learn the art of terrorism <laughs> recently a couple of days back it was a news article in the newspapers that the nobel prize winner nobel prize winner betty williams she said that she would love to kill george bush <laughs> she would love to kill george bush which i differ <laughs> after one of the talks in london which i gave on jihad and terrorism there was a youngster muslim who said that allah akbar that to george bush <laughs> there were many non muslims there and a full talk the impact went down so i told him if you see the history of a beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he prayed to almighty god there were two umars who were staunchly against islam he prayed to almighty god that at least let one of the umar gets daya they become muslim so that there will be a help for islam and we know the second caliph of islam was the umar radhiyallahu anhu may allah be with him he accepted islam the same way i pray to almighty god that at least almighty god gives hidayah to george bush or at least to one of them george bush or tony blair <laughs> imagine if there's so much strange against islam if they accept islam what will happen i am a dai that's what I always do try and convince him about the good of islam people tell me brother zakir you travel throughout the world don't you have problems alhamdulillah summa alhamdulillah allah's help i know many of my colleagues who keep on traveling they have had several problems and my appearance the beard the cap and a coat though i look like a joker it's a soft target <laughs> but with god's grace with allah's grace alhamdulillah i never had problems i spent time many a times with these immigration and police officers i was there in new york two days before 911 i just left new york i was there for two weeks alhamdulillah summa alhamdulillah good i left If I'd been there during 9/11, maybe I would be implicated, possibly. I went to London immediately, and last time I was in USA, though I've been invited several times because of my tight schedule, I was in 2003. I'd gone to Los Angeles to receive an award. Immediately, I was prepared that during immigration I'll be interrogated the way I look. I'm mentally prepared. They asked me why have you come here. I said to receive an award. Award for what? Do you belong to a charitable organization? What award are you getting? I said to serve humanity. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, "Speak ye the truth, and truth shall free you." I speak the truth. That's why I've got the award. And it went on the long conversation. Later on, I went to the customs, and I purposely say, "I've come for an Islamic conference." Islamic conference, go for checking. <laughs> they open my bag, and they see my video cassette, terrorism and jihad. <laughs> and on that cover, there is a pistol. So the customs officer says that do you believe in jihad? I said yes, I believe in jihad. Even Jesus Christ believed in jihad in striving and struggling. No, no, no. I mean, do you believe in fighting? I said you read your Bible. If you read the Bible, the Bible speaks about fighting. If you read the book of Numbers, chapter number 31, verse number 1 to 19, the book of Exodus, 
chapter number 22, verse number 18 to 20. The book of Exodus, chapter number 32, verse number 27 to 28. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, said in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 22, verse number 36, that take you the sword and go and fight. So immediately, most of the custom officers, eight or ten, gathered together and they started asking, Sir, can we ask you one more question? <laughs> so I just told my host on the mobile that please don't worry, I'm stuck up here, I'm just doing dawa. <laughs> I keep on traveling, mashallah. I've been to Australia, to UK several times. By God's grace, time I did spend, not more than a couple of hours. I know many of my colleagues were detained. Many of my colleagues mean my speakers. I'm not talking about my Bombay speakers. I'm talking about the international speakers who keep on traveling. They have been detained. They have been deported. Allah's grace that so far I have not been detained. I have been deported. Maximum half an hour are dawa. And I see to it that whenever I get opportunity, I grab it. But I see to it that I quote the scriptures. I follow the guidance of the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, which says, Ta'ala wila kalmitin sawa imbayna baynakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. So when we come to common terms, most of the problems are solved. This talk, what we're having today, was supposed to be held more than a month back. I was supposed to be in London. That's why this talk is delayed. And when I landed on the 10th of August on Heathrow Airport, and I received a call from my wife. Sakir, where are you? I said, why? No, are you in the airport outside? What happened? I said, no, we just received information that there are some 21 Muslims arrested who are supposed to do bomb blast, etc., etc. But alhamdulillah, I had my own camera crew with me. We were 12 of us. All of them, cap, beard, God's grace, we passed through very well. I had my talk in Birmingham. It was successful. Next day, sometimes we go and do shooting. So next day, we went to one of the Jewish graveyards and we were shooting. Shooting, not shooting, we were recording. You know, we in our lingo, we say shooting means recording on the video camera. Just to get stocks out of the city. And we spent a couple of hours in the Jewish graveyard. Later on, we went to one of the churches, did the recording shooting. Then we went for breakfast, and we came back to the hotel in the afternoon. Then we get information. The police of Birmingham, they're trying to track us down. Maybe some passerby went and complained. They were looking for seven or eight terrorists with cap and beard. Who are these people? They had the number, plate. And they knew it was a green car. So what they did, they phoned the insurance company and they tried to find out where we were. And finally, they located us in the hotel. But luckily, while doing inquiry, they even happened to speak with the person who I had breakfast with. And he happened to be a very famous politician, Muslim politician. So when the chief of that area, of the police station, spoke to him, that you know, we're looking for these terrorists. He said, what nonsense they're talking? Do you know, two months back, I had given a DVD of a person by the name of Dr. Zakir Naik. He said, yes, he's the same person. Oh, same person. Problem solved. The passerbys who had reported, you know, beard is dangerous. Beard, cap, dangerous. You have to be careful. But again, God's help, Allah's help, and I'm safely back here. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been here to give the talk. We Muslims should not be afraid. We should speak the truth. But with hikmah. You have to be careful. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125, Udu ila sabili wal hasna, billati ahsan. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. When we speak, you have to speak with hikmah. Now we realize, after seeing the scenario, that who has the monopoly on terrorism? And according to me, Terrorism is a monopoly of the politicians. <laughs> According to my understanding and survey, terrorism is a monopoly of the politicians. Irrespective, they may be politicians of USA, of UK or India, it is the monopoly of the politicians. We have to realize what is the cause of terrorism. If we want to abolish terrorism, first you have to